It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to full shows and read reviews online at WCBE.org. I'm John DeSando. And I be Kevin Carr. <laughs> and this be It's Movie Time. Yeah. All right, Kevin, The Lighthouse. Yes. Now, is it as dark as I remember it? Yes, it is. <laughs> But it's also very, very bright in certain parts uh, because there is the light of the lighthouse, which has its own symbolism and meaning. Right. And here's the thing with the lighthouse. <laughs> it's not for everybody. Do you think? It is not for everybody. <laughs> it's done by the guy who did The Witch, which was a very polarizing movie in itself. <laughs> two guys stuck two guys. in a lighthouse for almost two months? Is it? Well, Five it's weeks? indeterminate. Uh, they okay. start off... They're there for four or six weeks or something like that, but then a, a storm prevents right. anyone. And it's them slowly or quickly descending into madness. <laughs> Kevin, I think if you and I were stuck for five weeks, we would drive each other crazy in a, a lighthouse. Yes. And, and where one of us, and it'd probably be me, wasn't able to go, you'd be in charge of the light. And I wouldn't be able to go up there because you're, the, you're, the, you're the, the main man of that. It's just... Well, and that's the thing. It's, it's the interaction between these two people. And it's the, the older, more seasoned Wiki, played right. by Willem Dafoe, and the younger Wiki, played by Robert Pattinson. And their interpersonal uh, relationships and, and how they interact with each other. Uh, the, the, the main point of this, there's subtext everywhere. Oh boy. There is symbolism a, all over the place. Hidden meaning uh, about everything and <laughs> it's it's for your own interpretation but it, it's it's there and it's one of those movies where it's 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 not just about two people going mad in a lighthouse. There's a lot more to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's I, up to you to yeah. figure out what it is. I think you can you know you can hear echoes of Herman Melville. Uh, oh, for yeah? me I even heard echoes of Hitchcock. Okay. With uh, the bird motif sure. and the winding staircase stuff. Yes. I, I kind of... Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, I'm certain there are more. From, uh, from yeah, especially from that cinematic uh, level of using that suspense yes, yes. from Vertigo that, and exactly. the Exactly. And wondering what's going to happen when, in fact, nothing really happens. <laughs> well, no, a lot of stuff happens. A, a great deal of stuff happens. But here's the thing. It, it was taken from a lot of the language of Herman Melville. Yeah, it, they have a thing at the very end. They they mention that they they take some of the writings of Herman Melville to yeah. construct the dialogue. Yeah, and and so if you're a fan of Moby Dick, if you've read Moby Dick, it has that feel. It has that Ahab feel. That's yeah, right. And just as Moby Dick is not just about a bunch of people on a boat chasing a whale. <laughs> right. This is not. This is more than just two guys going mad. And and there's there's uh, you know a lot of the sea symbolism, and uh, the other. And I point this out. Yeah. I am a big fan of watching stuff at home because I don't like going out. Okay. But this is a movie that is worth seeing in the theater for the sound design alone. Because you get the sound of the lighthouse, you get the sound of the ocean, yes. and, it, and, it, and it envelops you. It is very well done. And the aspect ratio is almost square. Well, yeah, it's the old Academy frame. You're right. And, you know. uh, TV size was what you're used to, but it's, it's not widescreen. Yeah, and it's, it's certainly... To, to to give that claustrophobic effect. Of course. And and it does, I think, a great job. In mm -hmm. fact, there are many times when you don't know it's this box uh, aspect because the sides are dark, I think, as I recollect. Well, but, yeah, you'll see Yeah, you'll see the sides just disappear into yes, blackness. Yes, yes. And, and and it plays to, you know, the being trapped. It plays to the fact that in the lighthouse in, in their uh, in their quarters is, is they're boxed in. I mean, there's a lot to it. Yeah. And, there's a lot of reasons to it, and a lot happens, and, and some just fantastic performances by both guys. Are you kidding me? Uh, I think it's a shame because they're both they're both going to uh, negate each other mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, the nominations. Yeah. Isn't that the case? And you you sometimes get two actors who are so closely good as they are both good in this. You you you've seen that before, and you you saw that with the favorite last year. We had a, a, a lot of a, a lot of the women involved in that. I think they pulled the yes, nominations yes, away from each oh, other, yes. and particularly the support. Which is, ones. I mean, believe me, this is to our benefit mm -hmm. because they are. See, you just can't keep your eyes off of these two guys. And I, I think Defoe is the one who's probably going to get more yes, nominated. Yes, I would think so. His his performance is bigger, but Pattinson actually—it's one of the few times I've ever seen him act. 
Listen, I th I'm i really so surprised after Twilight. I thought he was a goner. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he's pulling out these really good little movies. Well, and he's done stuff like Good Time, good time. And High Life, and, and yeah. Cosmopolis, and all these other ones. But this one, I think actually he does something more than just the brooding, yeah. angry character that we've seen before. Well, Kev, I see an arc in this uh, character arc mm -hmm. where he's taciturn at the beginning and just kind of the, uh, the victim of Defoe's yeah. dominating character. And his stories, sea stories, and his lies, and all. And then all of a sudden, Pattinson's character begins to come out yeah. to the point where Defoe's character says, "You really, you got away with words." Yeah. And well, and that's the thing. It's it's his character. His is the one with growth. If, if, growth. If if you look at the movie as someone's journey, I believe it's Pattinson's journey, and yes, I believe good. that he's the main one. Even though Defoe is so dominant. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, I mean, for animal lovers, it's going to be tough. Well, I don't yeah. want to see where he bashes the heck out of a seagull. There, there's, there's critical <laughs> moments in there, and, and there, there, there's also some incredibly funny moments. It has some laugh out loud Yeah, moments. well, Kev, you're stretching here incredibly, as, as maybe a little more than but some people would see. You wouldn't expect. There are lines where suddenly it brings down the house. Yes, I know. And, and, and there are moments. Uh, that are weird, and there's stuff that's so obviously hyper realistic that it's clear that there's something in here. But this is a movie that's meant to be dissected. <laughs> it is. And you're reminding me again of Coleridge's The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, mm. uh, where you have the albatross bugging yes. the heck out. <laughs> the, the albatross around his neck. <laughs> yes. Only the albatross in this one is the lighthouse itself, I think. Oh, very good. <laughs> Beyond his phallic symbolism. Well, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of homoeroticism in this as well. <laughs> there is indeed. All right. Kevin Carr, the film is The Lighthouse. What grade do you award it? Here's the thing. Every <laughs> year there's some artsy-fartsy movie that I go gaga over, and this is that one for this year. I'm going to give it an A+. <laughs> oh, very good. And I'm going to give it an A. But we will again with a caution. This is not, it's not as you for it, It's not Batman and the Green Goblin. <laughs> in a lighthouse for an hour and a half. <laughs> or maybe it is. <laughs>